Good morning. Thank you so much for coming. My name is James Osborne. I'm with Alliance Behavioral Healthcare. I'm the director of our community engagement and outreach. And we are thrilled that you're here this morning. Brandon Tankersley is with us. He's been appointed to the North Carolina Governor Corey to be a board member of the North Carolina Brain Injury Advisory Council. He's been working with the Department of Health and Human Services to contribute towards definitions of brain injury, promote interagency coordinations of efforts, studying the needs of individuals with brain injuries, and coordinating prevention efforts. I've uh, also been working with the Secretary of Health and Human Services, and he is also with Monarch, the Director of Care Services. So welcome, Brandon. Thank you. Again, my name is Brandon Tankersley. I'm very flattered to be here this morning, to be asked by, by um, the department and to come in and present about traumatic brain injury. And I just want to emphasize that throughout the last 25 years of my brain injury recovery, I have a true understanding of just how magnificent and how vital and intricate an organ the human brain is. How do I change my brain? <laughs> I really don't know, I don't know exactly. But let me tell you about some areas where I have learned and that I do know about. I have learned about my brain's many functions. They can often be taken for granted. Things like eating, breathing, swallowing, remembering, going to the bathroom, hearing, blinking, and balancing can all be taken for granted easily and not be realized until you can no longer do them. I had to relearn how to eat, breathe, swallow, talk, walk, and even more all over again. I was an inpatient in the hospital for almost an entire year, and I'm a tremendous example of how I, a tremendous example of how I changed my brain from going to I can't do it anymore to I can do it now. I had daily physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Following my hospitalization, I entered a respite center where I had to relearn how to perform all my daily living skills. Things like bathing, cleaning, shopping, talking to strangers, being cordial. All that stuff taken for granted, you just you have to relearn that stuff. Tactics like role playing, medication, trial and error were used regularly by doctors, nurses, and therapists and I'm confident that these tactics surely played a role in my changing my brain. Without that daily intensive support and therapy for almost an entire year, I would not be as far along in my recovery as I am today. Sadly enough, individuals are not being provided that same daily therapy I was provided due to lack of state and Medicaid funding for TBI. I have learned about the role my brain plays in, in moods and emotions. I've also been diagnosed since my accident as borderline bipolar. It's something I have to deal with on a daily basis. To change my brain, I have learned tactics similar to even uh, deep breathing or just being quiet by myself to change my brain when I feel a mood swing coming on. They do not always work, but I have learned through study, therapy, and again, trial and error, that if I take advantage of both prescribed and directed help, I can manage my mood swings, you know, and make them so that I can work through them without having to go off the deep end. I share this very personal information with you. Because I want you to understand that there is a complex and direct interplay
between TBI, traumatic brain injury, and mental health that needs to be addressed further in North Carolina. I've learned the vital role my brain plays in my short-term memory. In my life's day-to-day roles, I've learned strategies to deal with my short-term memory deficiency with support, again, from doctors, therapists, and my own research on the Internet. In this area, I'm not certain about about the amount of brain changing that has gone on. For myself, it's involved more accepting myself in this condition, realizing that I now have to take advantage of ways to compensate for my memory loss. These compensation strategies are not fun. In fact, there are a lot of extra work. But if I have realized, if I want to live up to my potential after sustaining a traumatic brain injury, they're necessary. Compensation is necessary. I've been told by neurologists that my memory will most likely get worse over time. And I can tell my memory's bad. It could be getting worse. But I try to maintain the strategies I have learned and most importantly, stop getting mad at myself for my short-term memory loss. I used to get so frustrated when I couldn't remember people's first names. It would create near depression, and sometimes um, in, in my life, at this time in my life, though, you guys, I don't even try to remember people's names. Don't even try. And that has led has been been instrumental to myself coming to terms with my disability and just accepting it. I'm happier now. I have also have an understanding that as a result of my traumatic brain injury, having a seizure is inevitable for me. Seizures can be very traumatic, especially when you're alone. And I live alone. And I've had seizures by myself. Um, Paralysis, consciousness, pain, breathing, and losing control of bodily functions all play a role. To change my brain, I had to realize I need to take my medication. Have regular checkups by my neurologist. And keep those informed of any changes in my day-to-day function. The length of time to recover, it is taking me to recover, is certainly for me the most difficult aspect of being a TBI survivor. Take note, I didn't say the length of time it took me to recover because I'm still recovering. And it's been 25 years. Sometimes it's difficult not to give up. My personal motto, even though my personal motto is never give up. Problems like seizures, memory loss, mood swings, physical capability are easy to get down about. Am I eligible for SSDI? Ha! You bet I am. I don't have to work another day in my life. Maybe one day I have to take advantage of that. But right now, while I'm able, I want more my independence. I want responsibility for myself. This is why I enjoy my career at Monarch so much. And I enjoy speaking at events like these. I want to help other TBI survivors realize that TBI is not the curse of death and that recovery really is possible. The other very difficult part of recovering from a TBI is the stigma involved with being a survivor. I have a speech impediment, I have balance issues, and other other issues that are visible as well. And in so being, I can often be stigmatized 
as some kind of basket case with little hope for success in life. Not by doctors, but by friends and members of the opposite sex. It can be extremely, it can be extremely hard to find love due to stigma resulting from TBI. Sometimes when I try to go to public places, it can be loud. I can be understood when I speak, but in a loud area, oftentimes other individuals can't understand what I'm saying. And I find women will draw wrong conclusions about my persona and not even give me a chance to get to know them. This can create feelings of disappointment and even resentment. But I just have learned I have to keep on keeping on. Accepting myself with an understanding that I'm a diamond that has yet to be discovered. But I'm not done. Finally, the greatest consequence um, for me so far has been the disability, has not been the disability itself. It's been the cost of continued TBI outpatient services. I was an 18 year old teenager when I sustained my TBI. I was covered under my father's insurance. And, and, um, and, and so since then, though, President Obama has passed a law establishing that an insurance company cannot deny coverage based on pre-existing conditions. And yet I'm denied coverage all the time. All the time. My, my medical insurance provider, Key Benefits, tells me I was not covered by them at the time of my accident. For example, I lost all my teeth in the accident. This is not because of cavities. I was, this is a medical thing, so it's covered under my medical insurance. And um, I went ahead and, and, and 19, when I was 18 years old, covered under my father's insurance. I got a huge um, bridge put in my mouth so I could chew because I had no teeth. Okay, that was 25 years ago. Since then, my dentist is telling me that bridge is 25 years old. It needs to come out. Okay, this thing was the last 10 years. And, you know, the, the, the two teeth it's attached to on both sides of my mouth are, are, are being hurt. And see, and I am having to endure pain when I chew and even swallow. Okay, and the dentist and TDS is saying that I need to have implants put in because I need to have that bridge taken out. But key benefits, they won't pay for it. They say nope. It was you weren't covered by us when we had that, when we had when you had the accident. So we're not going to pay for it. So you know what am I going to do? It costs like thirty grand. And so, but that's just an example. I mean, and I then I've had both my dentists and the secondary DDSMD both have written letters to key benefits, establishing the necessity. Of this, um, I need um, of the the implant, the the um, teeth implant. I'm brain damage. <laughs> this is a real problem, though, you guys. This lack of insurance. Even though the law has been passed, insurance companies are still getting away with it. Key benefits told me. The law says we cannot deny coverage, but we can still make stipulations about what is covered and what is not covered. Whatever that means. So despite all these setbacks and the stigma attached to TBI, I try to remain positive and realize that I can change my brain. I see doctors on a regular basis to monitor my condition. It is vital that I be honest, divulging condition changes to what and telling the doctors, you know, if I can if they if I need if they need to help me. 
I take advantage of TBI support groups. I keep myself grounded and aware of my condition by going to church. Exercise plays a significant role in my recovery and mental and physical stability. Having set routines is very therapeutic for me. I have an exercise routine. I worked out this morning. I have a house cleaning routine. I have an eating routine. I have a personal hygiene routine. I have a work routine. I attend church and support groups routinely. These routines keep me focused and satisfied. If these routines are broken, it can be detrimental to my mental and emotional psyche. It is important for me to remain busy, serving a purpose in life, and feel like I'm contributing. This enables my personal psyche to remain motivated, and it's something I've had to come to grips with, and something I've had to realize on my own to change my brain. Most importantly, for my continued quest to change my brain throughout the last 25 years of recovery, I've had a wonderful support system, including my family, my friends, my church, my co-workers, doctors, nurses, and many therapists. My family helped me believe in myself, and the doctors, nurses, and therapists helped me establish a path towards recovery. In the end, though, it all came down to my personal ability to start to push myself towards recovery. If you're serious about changing your brain after TBI, you have to be committed to recovery. I know that not every survivor will have the same opportunities of a recovery process, but I thank God every day that I did. Many brain injury survivors need to understand their, their right, with the rights that they need to understand that they can recover and have a better kind of life, but it comes only with hard work and determination and the right supports and services. The public needs to understand again that TBS, TBI is not the curse of death and that recovery is possible. I want to finish up with an inspirational story regarding TBI and recovery. It is the year 1991 and I was just a teenager. I was out with my friends, hanging as teenagers do, and in a matter of seconds my whole life changed. My friends and I were involved in a serious traumatic car accident. It was drinking and driving and not wearing a seatbelt were both factors. I was in the back seat of the car and I sustained a life-threatening traumatic brain injury and I was in a coma for six weeks and required an inpatient hospitalization, as I said, for nearly a year. It is now 2016. I'm 44 years old and after ongoing prayers, great medical attention, and years of continuous intensive therapy, I have overcome and continue to overcome beating the odds that were so highly stacked against me. I've graduated from THE Ohio State University <laughs> with a bachelor's degree in business administration. I've earned a master's degree in special education. I've been both an in software engineer and I, I've been and both of the, both of these degrees I achieved on scholarship. And I want to make a point that these scholarships did not come find me knocking on my door and say, "Can we pay for your college?" I got scholarships because I went out and I found them. They're out there. Old people die all the time and leave like. You know, they, they say, I want to pay for somebody's college once a year, you know, for the, the next 20 years. And there's all kinds of scholarships out there, but you have to look for them. You have to find them. They won't come find you. you got to find them. 
And this, that, that kind of thing is available to people like me. And so we need, I mean, I don't want to make that more clear. Um, okay. Um, it required me, okay. I worked, okay, as I was going to say before, I worked as a software engineer for an organization called LexisNexis, where I coded PL1 and the common business-oriented language, COBOL. After earning my master's degree in special education, um, I was a special education teacher for six years. After continued trial and error and pursuit of success, I just never gave up. I was fired from both those positions, by the way, for um, not being able to... Um, I was fired from my teaching position because parents and the kids I taught said, why is that kid being taught by somebody who's got a disability himself? And yes, I did set out of court with that because <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> but uh, I was then blacklisted from teaching and I had to find a whole new career. And thank God it, it, it led me to what I am now being the director of peer support services for Monarch of the whole, for the whole state of North Carolina. I have an awesome job. I'm active in my church. I have volunteered countless hours. I've spoken publicly to many groups, individuals, schools, legislative committees, and organizations. Monarch is a not-for-profit organization that helps individuals facing MHDD and SA challenges and helps them work towards recovery. I'm involved again in my church with numerous organizations and community groups that are all based on working hard and not giving up in the face of adversity. My story has been documented countless times. I have received numerous scholarships and awards during my recovery. I've been to Columbus, Ohio to testify in front of the House of Representatives in favor of passing a primary seatbelt law. In the state of North Carolina, I'm a contributing state board member to the North Carolina Consumer Advisory um, Family Advisory State CFAC. Um, I'm a contributing member of the North Carolina State NC SEG Stakeholders Engagement Group. Um, I'm on the North Carolina um, Certified Community Behavioral Health Steering Committee grant. There's a big, if you guys heard about the CCBHC and how, and then um, the governor asked me to be uh, on that um, on that board. I get calls now from the governor. I get calls. I, I, I presented to Richard Brazier Monday. Dave Richard, Dave Armstrong. He told me to call him Rick. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I've also been appointed by Governor Pat McCoy to be on the board of the National of the North Carolina Brain Injury Advisory Council. There, I work with the Department of Health and Human, Health and Human Services to contribute towards the definition of brain injury and the coordination of efforts and making recommendations to the governor, the General Assembly, and the Secretary of DHHS regarding planning, development, and funding for TBI. Changing your brain is all about commitment to your own recovery and not giving up in the face of adversity. And that's all I have. Thank you.